coffee and everything and come on in. I'm Jeff Balzer. I'm Associate Vice Chancellor for Research in the Medical Center and it's a tremendous pleasure to welcome you to Vanderbilt Medical Center for the Marino Autism Research Institute's Environment and Autism Etiology Symposium. Today's event is really a, a tribute to the hard work of our sponsors, Dan and Claire Marino, and we're really thrilled to have them here for their first visit ever to Vanderbilt University and Vanderbilt Medical Center. NFL Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Marino and his wife Claire established their foundation in 1992 to support not just autism but medical research, treatment, and outreach programs for children with chronic illnesses and developmental disabilities. And their son Michael was diagnosed with autism at age two. The foundation, since they began, has raised $24 million and is impacting programs and services and research for hundreds of thousands of children and their families in this country. We're really honored that through the Marino Autism Research Institute, or MARI um, for short, the Marinos have invested in Vanderbilt's research enterprise. And a bit later, you'll hear from Wendy Stone, the Vanderbilt director of MARI, who will highlight some of the impact of the new MARI initiatives. What I'd like to mention this morning is the impact this kind of support has on the Vanderbilt research enterprise and on all of us and the kinds of things we can do uh, to make a difference. You, you may know that we have a growing portfolio of NIH research. We're now uh, the 10th largest uh, NIH funded research enterprise in the United States, up from 23 only a decade ago. But with that, the federal budget deficit is a growing problem. And now, instead of one in every five or one in every four NIH grants being funded, it's more like one in 10. So what happens when federal funding for research becomes tight is it becomes very conservative. And only things that are fully baked and aren't very risky can be funded. So the really cutting edge, adventurous ideas that break through the envelope and get us to completely new places those grants fall by the wayside. And that's where funding from organizations like the Marino Foundation can make a big difference. They're filling a gap in the discovery pipeline because that money can be used for the most high risk but most promising ideas. An example is the way um, we're beginning to solve complex problems for how the genes interact with the environment at Vanderbilt or through our DNA data bank. You know, one of the, this is one of the many resources we're investing in and we believe has tremendous found, uh, uh, promise for our work with children and disabilities. You may know that the DNA data bank has been accruing samples for the last year and now is accruing at the rate of 900 DNA samples a week. And about three weeks ago, uh, we passed the 40,000 sample mark, which makes Vanderbilt the largest DNA bank in the United States. And within about two years, we'll be the largest DNA bank in the world, uh, passing our close friends in Iceland. Um, so, so this, like many other things, is an entirely Vanderbilt investment. It's not the kind of thing that the NIH would ever do. And um, it's those kinds of um, resources that funding from organizations like the Marino Foundation really help us engender and make available to our faculty. So we are so appreciative to Dan and Claire that they were able to craft such a remarkable research mission so that someday no family will have to experience the fear of having a child diagnosed with a disability without the solace of knowing where to look for the two most important things they need, help and hope. And on behalf of Vanderbilt, I hope you'll enjoy this wonderful day of science, and please join me in a warm welcome to our sponsor, Dan Marino. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Balls, I appreciate it. Um, uh, for Claire and I and the foundation and everybody that's worked with our foundation, uh, just would like to tell you, Mary, who's here, our CEO, uh, that uh, we're very grateful to be a part of uh, such a cutting-edge 
symposium and uh, just to be a part of all this and, and to be here, you know, at Vanderbilt. And want to thank you all for your hospitality. You know, we had came in yesterday, had dinner last night and some uh, fundraiser, you know, cocktail party, had a good time, met a lot of good people. Um, but most importantly, I wanted to uh, thank our co-chairs, Beth Ann McLaughlin, and she's here somewhere. She's been great. There you are, Beth Ann, right over there. She's very, very passionate about what she does and gave us a tour yesterday. And, and uh, I want to say uh, thank you for uh, also for giving me a new nickname. Last night she was calling me Sugar. <laughs> so I hope, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should, I hope it sticks. I don't know, maybe. Um, and Pat Levitt, thank you so much uh, for being a great partner here at Vanderbilt and uh, being a co-chair. There you are back there, Pat. Thank you uh, so much. And Wendy Stone for helping out uh, the Autism Research Institute. We really appreciate it. I don't know where's Wendy, but she's here somewhere. There you are, Wendy. Thanks. Um, I know a lot of you have traveled a long way, and I just want to welcome to our you know, our first uh, Autism Research Institute Symposium. Thank you so much for coming. And, and you know, it's been uh, two years, really, since we've started this. And we were in Miami when we met with uh, the scientists from Vanderbilt and the scientists from uh, the University of Miami. And I just also want to say thank you to all my friends at the University of Miami that came and, and uh, came up here to be a part of this. And, and you've, we've had a special relationship with you for years and uh, appreciate you being a part of it. Um, so when you think about those two years, I think we've really, you know, made a lot of strides and I'm real excited about what we've been able to do and now to be, you know, a part of this uh, today is pretty special for Claire and I and our foundation. And yesterday I had an opportunity to walk around and meet some of the researchers and go to the lab with uh, Beth Ann and, and uh, Claire and I and, and uh, some of our people from the foundation and Mary and, and to tell you it's really good to see you know, where your, your, your money's going, where some of the hard work and some of your vision, some of the things that you've been able to, you know, do and, and kind of look at uh, where it's going and seeing the work actually happen and uh, seeing the people, the enthusiasm, you know, the researchers there in the lab and, and some of you are here today and I just I had a really good time and a lot of that stuff went right over my head, you know, but, <laughs> but I, I, I will tell you, I love to see the passion for what you're doing because you are really making a difference and, and last night I had an opportunity to talk to some of the scientists that are going to present today. And, and once again, a lot of that stuff went right over my head, but uh, I'm learning. And uh, I really look forward to you know, all of you guys coming up here and, and, and presenting your work and your research. And you know, what's important about this is that we're all sharing. You know, we're all sharing in the common goal, you know, the common goal of making a difference. And um, you know, I look back at uh, you know, how I really got Claire and I got started in all this, and my son Michael was diagnosed with autism when he was two years old, and that was 1992, was it 92, Claire? Yeah, something like that. Come on, contribute here some a little bit. <laughs> but uh, really, our work in the foundation has really you know, started out when we realized that how families did not you know, have the opportunity to services, uh, some of the outreach programs in the community that they needed because of how, you know, kind of Michael was treated to a certain extent and how you had to, you know, travel to get the proper diagnosis. And, and we had a dream of starting a uh, developmental center, which we have now in Weston, seeing 3,000 kids, 3, kids a month or even, maybe, maybe even more. It's 6,000 now, Mary. See, I got a good. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, you know, in the center, it's been terrific. And for me, you know, I, I, I think that when you have a family member uh, or a child with autism and, and they come up to you and say that, you know, what we've done is making a difference in their lives, you know, it's very satisfying for me and uh, actually give me chills thinking about it. Um, but, you know, really this, app, you know, that has been our work, really the services and the outreach programs and, and information. And now it's the next step is, the autism research and that's why we're really here today is because we feel like it's the next step where we really can make an impact on the lives of uh, families and, and children with autism so you know really to tell you the truth I think that we really could do something special you know this could be something special that can continue for a long long time and we can make a difference in the quality of life and that's really you know really what it's all about and I just want to thank you all for coming and being a part of this and sharing your work, all the scientists, all the researchers, uh, this could be something special that we can build on for years and years. So 
thank you everybody for coming and uh, and uh, we'll it's it's all about the research today so I'll shut up okay so thank you very much I am delighted to be standing here, not just because Dan Marino just stood here, or Sugar, <laughs> um, but because I, I get to welcome you on behalf of Vanderbilt and University of Miami MARI programs. Um, I do have some slides, which I'm going to try really hard to get, or Tony will. So we welcome you to the first ever Mar MARI Scientific Symposium. Okay. And uh, you already know um, the, that this, this symposium would not have been possible without the um, support, the dedication, the vision of Dan and Claire Marino, and we are, we are very grateful to them for that. But what you probably do not know is the extent to which they have directly impacted science here at, University, at, at Vanderbilt and at the University of Miami. When MARI was developed, the mission, there was a threefold mission to provide and promote highly innovative interdisciplinary team science, to understand um, lots of different areas of autism from the causes to the treatments, and to create important, impactful, cross-site opportunities for cutting edge research and clinical and, and training activities. And I think that we have done a nice job with, with the investment that they have made. And MARI has only been exi in existence for two and a half years. And we have awarded either pilot or augmentation grants to 22 investigators, six of whom are brand new to the area of autism research. And they span the areas of engineering to neuroscience to behavioral sciences. The, the investment and the grants that have been awarded have resulted in, so far, 69 pr presentations at professional meetings, 21 peer-reviewed publications, and 12 extramural grant awards. So that's pretty remarkable for a short period of time. Uh, the areas of research have spanned the causes of autism from at the cellular, genetic, physiological, and neurological levels, the characteristics of autism that includes sleep and attention and um, sensory processing, early identification, looking at the earliest behavioral markers that can be used for screening and for diagnosis, and also intervention so that we can optimize outcomes, not just for the children with autism, but also for the, the parents and their families. Uh, we really appreciate the faith that the Marinos have shown in us, um, and we, we hope that they feel um, that, that they have reaped some benefits and that the field has. Um, we also appreciate their, their solid commitment to the autism community. Also want to extend our, our very sincere thanks to Mary Parton, who has been instrumental in shaping the direction of MARI and in supporting us so that we could form the, the synergistic um, level that we have achieved across the two universities. 